was that dumb? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That was dumb. I, I don't know. I don't know. It might work. Welcome back to Video Connection. Tonight we're talking about Weird, the Al Yankovic story. Directed by Eric Appel, it stars Daniel Radcliffe and Evan Rachel Wood, along with many, many more. It's rated TV-14 and is currently streaming on Roku. Weird, the Al Yankovic story, explores every facet of Yankovic's life, from his meteoric rise to fame with early hits like Eat It and Like a Surgeon, to his toured celebrity love affairs and famously depraved lifestyle. Before we get into discussing this particular movie, I feel I should tell a quick story about my childhood, wherein my friend Jeremy and I formed a club that we called the Dare to be Stupid Club, based on a Weird Al song by that same name. One of our regular traditions in this club was to wear our matching Dare to be Stupid jackets and go to the local video store. And one of the videos that my family most often liked to rent was UHF, and the name of that store where we rented that movie so often was called Video Connection. Audible gasp? Dude, I've got chills. And with that out of the way, Aaron, what was your gut reaction to weird? It was pretty weird. Uh, totally happy about that, because that's exactly what I signed up for. So I had the privilege to go to an early screening of this movie in a theater at the Alamo Draft House in Denver, which was super awesome. I had a great time. And one of the things about this that was so cool was getting to see it in a theater full of people who were excited to be there. I literally mm-hmm. felt like I had traveled back to the 1970s to see a classic comedy uh, for the first time. And that's an experience I don't think I've ever had before. And I had honestly mm-hmm. forgotten what it was like to be in a theater at a comedy where everyone's laughing and all the jokes are landing. And that was just so much fun. A huge thing I want to say to everyone, if you can watch this in a group, watch it in a group. This is so much more fun Mm -hmm. to watch with other people. It was a great time. It almost achieved UHF level for those who are Weird Al fans, and I think that it was just wonderful. I actually wished that I had the chance to see it in the theater. Unfortunately, my local Alamo didn't do the advanced screening, but uh, as I was watching, I was wishing, like, man, I like... I was aware of the fact that this would have been so much more fun in a group than it was just watching it on my couch. But, you know, you you do what you got to do. And that's the beauty of streaming is you did get to just watch it on your couch. Sure. Let's turn that around, Dan. What was your gut reaction? I enjoyed it. Uh, As I said, I wished I had had the chance to see it in a group. Unfortunately, I didn't. But I still enjoyed it. For me, it fell a little bit short of UHF in terms of, you know, that elevated position that some of us have placed that film after decades of watching and enjoying it. But uh, even if it wasn't UHF for me, it was still a lot of fun to watch. I'm so old. You had to say decades with an S on the end. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry, but it's true. That's right. Okay, so I enjoyed it uh, quite a bit. I would say... Aside from, as I mentioned, wishing I had gotten the chance to see it in a group, I think the only other drawback for me is that I had been looking so forward to this movie for so long. I think I overhyped it for myself to where there's nothing they could have done that could have reached the levels I was hoping for. So as much as I enjoyed it, you know, I don't think it could have met my lofty expectations. No offense. I think that's totally fair. Yeah. I think somewhere along the way, I think I was able to shift my expectations a little bit more to the middle, and that helped. Mm -hmm. And then honestly, not expecting to see it in a theater and then getting to see it, I think really helped where it just elevated it in a way that uh, it probably wouldn't have been at home. And and if I was someone who didn't have UHF on such a pedestal, you know, growing up, I don't know that I would have had the expectations that high, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And just so we're totally clear, I also have UHF on that same pedestal and have also been watching it for all those years from my childhood. Okay, so if we can very briefly detour to talk about UHF, which some of you will know what we're talking about, and some of you might not. It is a 1989 movie by Weird Al that is a comedy classic. Uh, In our household, it was watched many, many times. I'm curious, Aaron, as as a fellow fan of UHF, if you caught a few of the UHF references or Easter eggs that were in Weird. (laughs) Now I'm scaring the whole movie in my head. I mean, I I wouldn't say there were like a ton. I'm not 
like I'm not going to grill you, but there were at least two things that I thought like were a nice little nod. I I feel like the things that stuck out to me were were sort of broad homage kind of things, and they weren't specific Easter eggs. In the bulletin board, when he's taking the name of someone to audition for a band, another one of the flyers on that board is for Cooney's karate class. Ah, I didn't see it. I missed it. That's awesome. That's definitely an Easter egg. <laughs> well, see, the beauty of this being on Roku is the fact that I'm going to get to go back and watch it again soon, which I plan to do. I'll probably watch it again this week. <laughs> Put it in. There's a whole segment that takes place in the jungle, and I noticed that that yes. felt very much like the beginning and the end of UHF in multiple ways and multiple mm-hmm. points. So that mm-hmm. one was... I assume that had to be deliberate. Must have been. It was just too... Well, it was so funny how it wasn't on the nose, but it was just, it was in that Mm -hmm. proper area. It was familiar enough that as a UHF fan, you definitely know sort of the the feel that they were going for there. Definitely. The only other thing I was going to say in that regard was just a specific casting choice that there is a character at a gathering in the movie that is played by Emo Phillips, who also has a role that is much beloved by us as a (laughs) butterfingered shop professor, shop teacher. Yes. That was something that I thought was a lot of fun about this movie is being a fan and paying attention on the internet for such a long time. There's so many things that I knew about. So, you know, for example, I knew Emo Phillips was going to be in it, but it didn't stop to think for a second of what he'd be doing. And when he finally does show Mm -hmm. up, you're like, what? I'll leave it at that. There were a lot of fun parts like that. There are many, many cameos in this movie, which is something we should talk about. But I don't want to spoil who they are and what role they're playing. For sure. Just... Eagle-eyed viewers will spot many familiar faces among the cast. And suffice it to say, (laughs) the fact that they got so many of them into the same frame is remarkable. Um, Mm -hmm. Which, that's something that I think is worth mentioning, is this movie was filmed in 18 days. So, if you know anything about filmmaking, that must have meant they did not have a lot of money to make the movie. (laughs) And what they accomplished with that money, I think, was exceptional, because... Mm-hmm. I, I can't believe that number. You, you know, even as silly as this movie was for a feature film, that's a ridiculous schedule. And the fact that they got everything knocked out and were able to edit a full-length movie out of it and it worked, it's pretty awesome. Right, that's like student project duration of shooting schedule. What that made me think is... You know, Weird Al should probably make more ridiculous comedies that are shot on a small schedule with a small budget like this, because that was so much fun. What would happen if he tried to make something that wasn't the story of Weird Al? There's a thought. There were a lot of different funny people in this movie. Some of them are comedians, and some of them are just actors who are good at doing funny stuff. One gem, I think, was Toby Huss, was the guy who played Weird Al's dad. I think he absolutely crushed it in every single scene that he was in. You know, he's playing this literal stereotype of an old-fashioned father that doesn't like what his son is doing and wants him to be traditional and conservative, and he's playing it so serious. And that's why it works so well, because the scenario is so ridiculous. The things that he's upset about are ridiculous. And he just is 100% like devoted to playing this, this part as though he were in a serious drama. And he probably made me laugh more than any other single person in the entire movie. Uh, What are some other things that he has been in that people might recognize him from? A huge thing that Toby Huss is famous for is voice acting on King of the Hill. So he does Cotton, that is Hank's father. He does Dale, you know, Mm -hmm. his friend, and he does Khan, his neighbor. So that's something that you'd, you'd, you'd hear it if you were paying attention to his voice. Live action, I feel like he's been all over the map in terms of, like, comedy and drama. This is a completely random reference, but I just wanted to mention it because something else that this role reminded me of was he was in something called The Spoils of Babylon that was a comedy miniseries on IFC a few years back, and he was also playing a serious role in a farce. If you are the sort of person that likes weird movies like this one, you might enjoy looking up Spoils of Babylon and giving it a stream. Related to casting, obviously, Daniel Radcliffe playing Weird Al, that was a pretty big thing for him to do, and I not only enjoyed thoroughly him playing the part, but there's almost something enjoyable about the fact that you can't ever stop thinking that that's Daniel Radcliffe because Daniel Radcliffe mm-hmm. doesn't look like Weird Al, doesn't sound like Weird Al. Yeah. 
Anyone got an accordion? It's such an unconventional choice. They have no similarities at all. And it just makes it yet, funnier. That's why it works. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's so funny. Especially the fact that he is completely ripped in this movie. Yes. Which, I mean, just like Weird Al, you know, obviously. But More of my nerdy internet research. It turns out that the whole thing with him being ripped was because Daniel Radcliffe is just kind of a healthy dude that likes to work out. And because he was ripped, the director thought it was hilarious and showed him with his shirt off more often than he was even planning on, just because it doesn't mm. make any sense. It just makes it that much better. It's been said before by other people that, you know, Daniel Radcliffe has made a lot of very interesting choices in his post-Harry Potter career. All signs point to him being just like a really genuinely nice person. He seems like the kind of guy you want to work with, regardless of what your job is. He doesn't mm -hmm. seem to have a big head about you know, where he's come from at all. And he seems like he would rather be doing something like this that is just, like, so much fun as opposed to something that's writing a massive check, not that he needs the money. Right. It's so neat seeing a guy like him with a guy like Al, who also has a reputation of being, you know, a really nice person that, that's easy to get along with and doesn't have a big ego. So I feel like there's a kindred spirit thing there that's kind of a big deal. But beyond that, Daniel Radcliffe understands how to be funny he you know he ha he is a good actor and he's good at doing the drama stuff but he understands comedic timing you know and mm -hmm. he just totally sold the awkward of what it is to be weird al in the absolute best cartoony way so i i'm quite proud of him that's a very good point i think some of the funniest stuff was the just overwhelmingly blatant references to the script or breaking the fourth wall or you know, just ridiculous exposition that is whatever an anti-master class is and how to write dialogue and characters just blurt out the thing that the audience needs to understand at that moment. They did multiple, mm -hmm. like, just perfect gut punch lines. It's hard to not spoil the jokes and to reinforce what you're saying. Absolutely. It's there and it works. Yep. A good example of something this movie does where they play something totally straight and that's what makes it so funny is the part when a teenage Weird Al goes to a polka party, but they treat it as though he's, you know, an underage drinker going to a party at some guy's house where the parents aren't home, and every cut, every line is based around every cliche you can think of, of underage drinking at a party with teenagers, and that's not what's happening, it's a polka party, and it is so funny. This is a low-budget movie, obviously, but it is funny how, as one continues to compare it to UHF, when you watch UHF, if your eyes are open, you see multiple sets that are like, wow, that <laughs> looks like a room with a curtain in the back. You didn't really have a whole lot of anything going on. This movie doesn't feel like that. It just feels like more contained. But the thing that stuck out to me after the fact that I found... I, I'm not even mocking them for it. I, I accept that they did what they had to do. But the inconsistency was that, you know, Weird Al skyrockets to fame when everything goes great. And the way they represented that was by him being in a really nice house. And that's the only thing we saw. You know, he wasn't out at some party at a fancy restaurant with all of this stuff. He wasn't out, you know, clubbing. He wasn't, you know, at a beach resort. Like, there's so many things you would do in a movie to symbolize wealth and it was clear that they were like, we could afford to rent this house for two days to film all of the scenes inside his house. That's how we know he's rich. <laughs> right. They stopped short of having the Scarface mountain of cocaine. For <laughs> <this morning. laughs> totally. So I was going to very briefly talk about a few cons with the movie for me, a few places that I felt held it back a little bit, at least for my personal preference. Um, one is that I actually felt there was a scene of violence that felt a little bit out of place. Obviously, there's a few scenes with some violence. I don't want to spoil anything um, that I was totally fine with. But there is a specific scene wherein one character is beaten pretty viciously by another character, uh, you know, barehanded. And it just, you know, I, I understand that they're trying to go so over the top that it's funny. But for me, it didn't really quite land that way. I mean, maybe it was different in the theater with a lot of people. For me, it just kind of felt uncomfortable. Um, yeah. You know, it definitely went on for a really long time. I think seeing it in the theater in a group of people made it work comedically so much better because 
it goes on a little too long, people chuckle, it doesn't stop, people laugh harder, it just sort of, you know, builds mm. up and uh, it really worked in the group setting, but I can see how without that filter on, it had that little air of, that feels like it really happened. And the character of being beaten, too, is just such a nice person that you wouldn't want to see that happen to. Not in the slightest, which of course is the joke, but it... Yes. Yeah, it can absolutely backfire. It also makes me think about, you know, violence in a movie like The Naked Gun. You know, when something completely horrendous happens to somebody, it's hilarious because it, it very it's mm-hmm. again, it's no, that was slapstick. That wasn't actual. And this one was sort of you are using all the sound effects and that's ow, 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 ow. And and that kind of fits in with what I was also thinking was compared to not necessarily just UHF, but you know, compared to Weird Al's other content in general i feel like this movie maybe is not open to as wide of an audience as for example his albums might be so i'm thinking perhaps of my young nephews who listen to his music and enjoy weird al but i can't recommend this movie to them yeah because there's just a few scenes like that that just go a little far on you know leaning into either violence or other adult type situations you know, that's fine, they can do that. Weird Al is a man who appeals to fans of all ages, and that I just thought it was a little bit unfortunate that this movie skewed just to a portion of that audience. And I, I agree with you. There there were uh, a couple of those scenes where it was kind of the, mm, wouldn't quite bring the kids in for that. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I totally deserve that. And it kind of fits in, too, with what you were saying about his father in the movie, how they play it very seriously. They go over the top with it to the point that it becomes funny. But some of the serious moments, for me, they were almost playing it too well Mm. to where they really felt serious. I actually agree with that statement because I think that my primary criticism was that it just felt like it got a little dry and a little slow in a few points. And again can't help comparing it to UHF. UHF is kind of going back to Mel Brooks airplane. Mm-hmm. It's sort of, you know, we're, we're only going to take 30 seconds here to get the story, but we're going to mm-hmm. stick as many jokes in as we can. This one felt like they took a few narrative breaths here and there to just sort of let plot happen. And it's not that there mm-hmm. wasn't anything funny, but it just got a little calmer. And I think it almost did it too much to its own detriment because it's ridiculous because you know it's weird the al yankovic story so it should have been an airplane kind of a movie i think where you just sort of roll from one joke to one skit to another joke and it it definitely had a couple of those wow that was a little too serious well and part of that to your point earlier that uh about daniel radcliffe being a talented actor he is able to sell these dramatic moments to the point that you are feeling the stress because he's playing it 100% serious. So even though some of the dialogue that he's saying might be funny, you know, when he is stressed out in this movie, you feel it and it, it lands as a serious beat. That is very true. There, there were multiple points where when he's struggling with things, which, you know, spoiler, he's a bit of an alcoholic, like it felt like a actual alcoholic suffering <laughs> and right. yeah in in this moment that was really funny but then in this moment it's like that's too depressing and you're absolutely right daniel radcliffe was almost too good at doing it in thinking about weird the al yankovic story i cannot help but compare it to another movie called walk hard the dewey cox story And you can't talk about one without the other because they are doing such a similar thing. Both of them are a parody of the musical biopic. There are also some thematic similarities in the story, particularly the father and son relationship. I don't want to seem unfair to the Al Yankovic story, but it's impossible not to see those similarities if you have watched and enjoyed Walk Hard, as I have. Yes, if you have seen Walk Hard, there's no way you're not comparing them. And from what I've Mm -hmm. seen in interviews and stuff, it it sounds like Al and and the director, Mr. Appel, were, you know, going and watching lots of biopics and kind of deconstructing them. It's totally clear that Walk Hard did the exact same thing. Like, they watched a whole bunch of biopics and deconstructed them. One of the things that I, I think Al said in so many words is they noticed that some biopics 
played pretty fast and loose with the actual details. So they thought, mm-hmm. why don't we do the same thing? Let's follow the template and then just make up a whole bunch of stuff. It doesn't surprise me in the slightest that they arrived at basically the exact same place. The major distinctions that I see between the two movies would be one is rated R, like very hard R, and one is not. Mm -hmm. And one is based on Weird Al's life, and the other one is completely made up. But there are many, many similarities there. And it it is a little bit tough to see them both and then not feel like... I, like, I don't think they ripped them off, but there's part of me that feels no. like, did you guys not see that movie? Because you might have made a few, you know, narrative changes just to try to deviate a bit more. Or maybe you wouldn't. Right, yeah. I don't think it's necessarily a problem, but I believe I probably would have enjoyed Weird more had I not seen Walk Hard, simply because it was impossible to not be comparing it in my mind as I was watching it. And there are a few instances where I feel like Walk Hard has a slight edge, not just in some of the comedic scenes. I mean, it's hard to talk John C. Riley. And that movie clearly had a bigger budget where they were able to spend a lot more time on the script and be a lot more careful about, you know, casting a whole bunch of specific scenes. So they definitely had an advantage in that way. Not to belabor the point. The only other thing that I feel like Walk Hard has a slight edge, I almost feel crazy for saying it, but in the songs department, because of the fact that with Weird, they're great songs, but we know them. Right. We've been listening to those songs for so long, so they're not a surprise to us when he starts playing the various songs that he does throughout the movie. Whereas in Walk Hard, they are original songs written specifically for that movie that are all parodying different well-known song styles, and they are they absolutely slay. They're hilarious. Yep. Again, I don't think it's a problem that these two movies tread similar ground, but if you haven't seen Walk Hard, maybe watch Weird first. And enjoy it. And then go check out Walk Hard also, because it's also very good and very funny. You know, it's funny. If one had never seen both of those movies, that is the order I would recommend watching them in. I'm ashamed that I can't remember the reference, but I recently read uh, an article about a movie that was similar to another movie. And the director said, well, there's a thousand bank heist movies. I think we can have two movies like this. I'm going to be really embarrassed if it turns out that that was about Weird and (laughs) Walk Hard. However, I think it applies here, where it's like, sure. uh, yes, two different groups of people can decide to parody the music biopic, and uh, they're unique enough. Uh, it's not like, you know, they're not both worth seeing. So, Aaron, what is your recommendation regarding Weird, the Al Yankovic story? I recommend it. I think it was super funny. I think that it is a honestly great introduction to Weird Al if you're not familiar, as ridiculous as that might be. It's just so much fun to watch, and it's a movie that succeeded at what it was trying to do, and I'm also very pleased with it for having such small resources, but really stretching them as much as they could to do the best thing with it that they could. I was super thrilled watching this on a screen and hearing those classic Weird Al tunes, and it sent me straight back to listening to his old catalog, which, of course, I just started moving through the years and listening to all the rest of it. But uh, it was thoroughly enjoyable to watch a movie with Weird Al music in it. Dan, what is your recommendation for Weird, the Al Yankovic story? I enjoyed it, and I also would recommend it, although... I would add the caveat, as we talked about earlier, there are some scenes that are not appropriate for younger viewers. Uh, So if you've got some young children that are fans of Weird Al, you might want to check it out without them first and then see whether you think it's appropriate for them. I think that's probably a fair way to handle it. That's all the time we have for now. Thanks for watching. Until next time, enjoy some Mrs. Hagenberger's butter cookies or perhaps a Twinkie Wiener sandwich, and we'll see you again here on Video Connection. Wow, that was even better than I imagined! Isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) I love it.